June Research Advisory Board webinar. On the agenda today, I'll make some introductory remarks. Uh, Dr. John Evans will talk about the Southern Alliance for Advanced Vehicle Initiative, and then we'll have a, a wrap-up and question and answer session. The webinar today will last approximately one hour. All webinar participants are initially on mute, and you can unmute yourself by going to the, the dashboard and clicking on the, the green microphone button. There will be a question and answer session at the end of the presentation. If you do not have voice capability through a microphone, you can submit your question in writing in the dashboard section, and Vicki will read the, the question to the, the webinar uh, participants. Recorded webinar can be viewed on the Auburn University Research Advisory Board website. Vicki will send out this link after the webinar is completed. You're encouraged to pass this link to your colleagues and contacts who may have interest in this subject matter. And if you know of people or organizations that may have interest in this research topic, please pass information to Dr. John Evans and, and Vicki will get his email address to you as well. At the end of the webinar, you will get a short survey, which will be emailed to you. We ask that you take just a couple of minutes and please complete the survey. Our next webinar is scheduled for July 16, and we'll feature the research of Tom Duvall from the College of Engineering. Tom will talk about the Auburn University Lego Manufacturing Lab, which is related to this presentation. The Auburn University Lego Manufacturing Lab provides industrial engineering students experience in a manufacturing environment, displaying the best manufacturing practices from material receipt to product delivery. Two students that, complete, that recently completed coursework in the Lego Manufacturing Lab told me that if they learned more in this lab than they did in any other class or lab they had at Auburn. So it's really a, really a good lab. I think you'll find it very interesting. Today we have a team of Auburn University faculty, which will be led by Dr. John Evans, to present an overview of the Southern Alliance for Advanced Vehicle Manufacturing Initiative. Auburn University is building a university, a multi-university research center for vehicle manufacturing to address the needs of regional vehicle manufacturers and their suppliers. And the word vehicle here doesn't mean automobile. It may be an automobile, it may be a tank, it may be a plane an interceptor, or any other type of transport mechanism. The center focuses on manufacturing efficiency, quality, and safety for manufacturing operations, as well as new materials and processes for next generation vehicles. The Southern Alliance for Advanced Vehicle Manufacturing Initiative is built on a very successful National Science Foundation Industry and University Cooperative Research Program called the Center for Advanced Vehicle and Extreme Environmental Electronics. This center has been in operation for over 14 years. Leading the presentation today will be Dr. John Evans. His interests include electronics manufacturing reliability. Dr. Evans has over 15 years experience in automo automotive manufacturing. He holds a PhD from the University of Alabama in Huntsville. And I'll let Dr. Evans introduce the rest of his team. So Dr. Evans will turn the presentation over to you. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, assume everything is working on the, the microphone end. Yeah. And if there's not, please send a signal to us. Uh, I'm here, uh, thanks Rodney for the uh, introduction. Uh, I'm here with, uh, with Tom Duvall. We sent the rest of our team packing so we wouldn't have so many <laughs> speakers on our, our uh, presentation today, but they, the, the, the group basically made up the materials in the uh, presentation. Uh, so I'm, I'm here with Tom Duvall, who will go through some, some pieces of the research and also um, some of the idea, uh, items in the Lego lab, just flashing it so you'll see uh, what will be coming down the, the, um, the presentation for July. So it's just uh, Tom and I. I'm, by the way, I'm the one on the left there, if you can't see me there. Uh, so Auburn University, I won't spend a lot of time going through Auburn University material because I assume everybody here is pretty familiar with Auburn and uh, what it's... Uh, capabilities are uh, for the university standpoint. Uh, but I want to talk about just a couple of items here on the research centers and uh, then this will actually lead into uh, the, the establishment of our new uh, manufacturing research center. We have several centers here. 
as Rodney said, one of them, Center for Advanced Vehicle Electronics, CAVE, uh, was actually started out in 1999, uh, and it started actually a collaboration of my technology team in Huntsville when I was with Chrysler Corporation uh, and Wayne Johnson, who is a world-renowned electronics packaging uh, person here at Auburn University, uh, and it's very successful in a very a lot of applied research for electronics. And I'll give you just a slide or two on that in a second. Uh, we also have a, the uh, National Highway Research Center, uh, Center for Occupational Safety and Ergonomics, which will actually tie into this work. We've got, of course, the Wireless Center most of, uh, are familiar with uh, as well. The AMSTC, the Alabama Microelectronics Science and Technology Center, uh, focuses on really advanced packaging uh, device issues and, and uh, some packaging materials. Uh, and we have a couple of other centers there too, the airline cabin. These are kind of the ones related to more vehicle-y topics. Uh, just to reiterate uh, the importance of Auburn in this is that we're putting out approximately one half of the undergraduate engineers in the state of Alabama. Uh, so we are the resource that uh, companies are using to get a lot of their employees for the future. Uh, also of note is we have minor in um, uh, automotive manufacturing and vehicle design. Uh, vehicle design over in mechanical engineering, automotive manufacturing is joint mechanical and industrial engineering. Uh, and just a, a note about the, the fact that we're running approximately, I think, $60 million in research at Auburn University uh, under the engineering program alone. And this uh, work would go under that, uh, that model of research. Um, to advance here with this. Anyway, uh, so I want to walk, walk back, uh, as Rodney was talking about, to the last uh, center that we developed here related to vehicles. It was in 1999. And during that time, uh, this center has run well over 30 million. It's probably totaling close to 40 million now. Uh, and this is driven by the industry in uh, mostly electronics, thermal issues, connectors, uh, reliability, new packaging technology, etc. Uh, and this has been very successful. This is, the, the, I believe, the premier uh, harsh environment electronics center uh, in the United States. Uh, and that hit, that's a, a industry university cooperative research center like we're proposing with this particular uh, new center. And uh, it focuses in, on uh, electronics packaging has been successful. So this is kind of the model that we're uh, uh, using for the new center. Here's an example of a project that was done uh, back uh, over 10 years ago when I was actually originally at Chrysler and then Tom with, um, <clears throat> with the work here at Auburn. Uh, we actually developed the multi-chip modules, the first one under the hood of the car in the world and ball grid array packaging technology for those of you familiar. This program saved over $25 million to Chrysler Corporation in four years, uh, all done with the model that we're, we're talking about here with the Industry Cooperative um, uh, Research Center uh, with the universities. And so this is the kinds of projects that we're looking to be successful, but again, over in the manufacturing side uh, as opposed to the packaging side. Uh, we do have different minor in education, so we'll just highlight those. Secondly, we, as I said, automotive engineering um, programs, business engineering programs, we have minors in tribology, which are, we're going to uh, link with this program as well. And we have a new program in nuclear power and in the materials engineering. So we have a lot of different minors. In the automotive, uh, this is automotive more specifically as opposed to vehicles. Uh, we have a minor undergraduate and a graduate uh, master's program that, um, uh, or, and certificate program that you can take. Uh, and it's focusing on very applied manufacturing needs, lean manufacturing, uh, Six Sigma quality control, uh, uh, factory floor control, data analysis, uh, and and these are uh, very uh, successful courses that we've we've added over the last four or five years. Uh, very applied to industry and it's been very successful. So we will be integrating this education into uh, the new research center and and e even more classes, uh, more course offerings under this type of model. Um, as Rodney mentioned, we basically built a manufacturing plant in the basement of the Shelby Transportation Building here. Uh, Tom Duvall and I basically put this together over several years, uh, and it's uh, uh, 
is designed to teach the students the various aspects of manufacturing and to physically put them in the plant, which you'll see in a second. Uh, you can see there that we're teaching the importance of uh, information in the plant, SQDCM metrics. Uh, you can see the layout of the operation and how it runs. We're teaching optical inspection, as you can see on the bottom left. Uh, the concept of uh, the, the supermarket concept fitting lines over on the right. Um, you can see uh, robotics up at the top right. And these are all uh, the things that, uh, that we're teaching the students and then putting them in the operation of a factory. So this will be a short little video. Hopefully it will play well with uh, the feed here and kind of give you an illustration of of what's going on, excuse me, uh, in our plant. Lego is, is in, in my opinion, and I've worked 13 years in a manufacturing assembly plant, are harder to build at rate than a car in an assembly plant. We're basically seeing how a normal production facility is fine whenever you're just being told to build, 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 build. We build a speedster and we build an SUV vehicle, and this represents both of those cars. These are very bright students. I'm sure that we could teach a class on building a house, and I'm sure they would ace that course, take them out to the field and say, build a house, now that's something else. So I think in the case of manufacturing, it's very important to be able to put their hands on and see it and touch it. Well, I think you all did a fantastic job. Okay, so you can you can see um, the fact that we're putting the students in a manufacturing plant and it runs high volume. Again, you'll see a lot more of this in July if you'd like to to attend that webinar and you can uh, get uh, Mr. Ball give you more details about this. Uh, similar to the kinds of hands-on activities in industrial engineering manufacturing, we have Dr. Payton's lab uh, and, and Dr. Payton teaches machining uh, and uh, uh, various aspects of, of metal joining uh, operations, cutting, welding, etc. And uh, he is, is a, uh, a very distinguished uh, lecturer and educator in this field, and he also will be working in some of the research activities associated with uh, different tooling, fixturing, materials, uh, processes, etc. Uh, and that's something that um, that we are very value will be very valuable to our initiative here. Uh, some of you probably have seen it uh, since your Auburn an Auburn um, attendees here have seen the write up that Jim Killian did, and here's just an illustration of that lab. Uh, we have similar activities in a large range of materials and technologies. I won't go through all these, but you can get the gist of the types of things we're going to be putting in and integrating into our center. So the new center we're building is, is basically a similar model to the Center for Advanced Vehicle Electronics, and it's focusing on the wide aspects of uh, vehicle manufacturing, all the issues associated that Rodney spoke to. Um, just so you'll have the context there, this is the core team we have. We probably have another five or six uh, faculty members that are actively working here at Auburn, and this is just the Auburn group. Uh, and you can kind of see the wide range of expertise uh, that we have here in this center. Uh, the background and reason we're doing this is most of you are very familiar with the automotive and aerospace manufacturing operations in the Deep South. Uh, our goal is to try to link the universities that are doing work associated with vehicles with uh, the, the industry needs so that we can build a very large uh, and very successful research initiative that links these, these capabilities together. And you'll see a little bit more about what we're, we're trying to do in a second. And just the, the importance, uh, we're probably talking about somewhere between 80 and $100 million a year uh, if you look at aerospace and automotive in the south if you add all of these up and certainly if you expand in the Kentuckys and, and, and maybe towards Texas. Um, so our focus here with the new center is to look at manufacturing systems designed for manufacturing operation and the supply base, uh, technologies and processes for mass customization, lean manufacturing and manufacturing management, uh, data analysis, data driven approaches for quality and occupational safety and ergonomics. 
And these are the primary thrust areas. Now we will be adding these as we have the expertise on board and the interest from the companies. So if you're interested in something that's not maybe specifically noted there, it doesn't mean that it would be excluded from, from the center. Um, the model of these centers are multi-university and so we already have UA Huntsville and Tennessee Tech on board actively working with us on this initiative uh, and we have been meeting with Clemson and LSU and they have been participating and their plans uh, uh, appear to be that they're going to join uh, the initiative as we launch this this next year. Uh, and then we have strong interest from in Mississippi State uh, and, and um, we're, we're going to be meeting with them about to participating with the center uh, and we believe they will be coming on this year as well. And then we've had discussions with the University of Alabama. It's not clear about uh, the direction they're wanting to go with their, their uh, automotive programs, but uh, uh, we may end up having the University of Alabama in. We have had dialogues with them about this. So what is an IUCRC? Basically, it is a uh, National Science Foundation run initiative. Uh, that is set up to try to uh, promote the industry driving the university to do applied research that, that feeds back and, and is valuable to industry. Uh, they put out money, uh, uh, some money to run this. They limit the overhead rate that universities uh, will charge, uh, minimizing the uh, amount that goes to administration and, and maximizing the amount that goes to the research and then they provide the legal documentation that large numbers of companies have signed across the country and organization and things like that. It's a very successful model they've been running for a, a long time. Uh, and I'll give you a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, the, uh, the focus areas that we're looking into this are in manufacturing systems design. This is anything from supply chain to the line balancing simulation, uh, some additive manufacturing, uh, sustainability manufacturing, uh, mass custom customization, looking at some of the new additive manufacturing, intelligent machines, robotics, etc. Uh, lean manufacturing initiatives, this is looking at continuous improve improvement, uh, Kaizen, lean thinking implementation uh, models. Uh, data driven, this is uh, anything from uh, design of experiments uh, to really doing deep data mining with, with uh, big data, large data. Uh, and methods to try to handle large data systems. Uh, and then occupational safety ergonomics, obviously issues associated with worker safety and, and worker issues, uh, injuries, and all. Uh, so the goal of the IUCRC that we're building here is to develop a long-term partnership so that this is a continuous operation so uh, companies would work with the universities and continue to add to uh, the, the direction of the center, uh, try to continually add to needs and try to solve the needs of the industry uh, as opposed to just individual research projects that you might fund and then the, then the faculty and the activities go away. Uh, try to, to provide a uh, real expansion of the uh, research infrastructure uh, with the work we're doing. This, the K program is an example of that with the uh, the types of things we support globally uh, in activities and certainly in the United States. Um, integration of research and education, you can kind of see the hands-on manufacturing labs and others that uh, will, will be doing uh, more of this in the future and hopefully you'll, you'll get to see the presentation in July that will kind of show the, the other educational side of this. Uh, and then uh, adding and enhancing the uh, intellectual capacity of the engineering and, and science activities. So if you look at the United States, there are a lot of centers around. This is a very successful model. Uh, and you see there are approximately 60 centers and 172 sites uh, across the United States. And so this new center will be uh, a center that will, will fit in with this general model that is there for the United States. So the goal that we have uh, we run a lot of these projects focusing at least short term on financial value payback to the companies. And so our goal would be to have a, a very minimum of a 10x return on investment for companies coming into the centers on their, their investment uh, programs. Some of these, as I showed you a little while ago, was, was you know massive compared to the investment numbers. Uh, but certainly we're looking for 
how do we, we do things that are going to provide substantial financial payback and looking at uh, labor savings, waste reduction, floor space reduction, uh, supplier cost, all of these things that are noted here uh, and trying to find improvements in operation efficiency and trying to save the companies a lot of money. Uh, the memberships for these centers uh, for the, 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 uh, the program we have here at Auburn will be a base membership of 50000 per year. And the, what you do with that money is you direct the research programs at Auburn and assist in directing the programs at the other universities as well. Uh, it's substantial in value because you leverage funding with the other companies. And so you have four or five or six companies that might be funding a specific focus area and, and a, a three or four hundred thousand dollar program is only costing uh, you know the fifty thousand interest or whatever uh, to try to uh, uh, drive solutions in your operation. So there's a substantial leveraging that happens here and sharing of collaborative knowledge uh, with the research centers. Also, there's a value in networking the industry experts. Uh, it, it's often in the K program that companies call us and just need a fifteen or thirty minute uh, question. A set answer from us, and and that uh, answer may save them uh, uh, hundreds of thousands, or, or in some cases, mi cases millions of dollars at times, uh, for getting the right expertise involved with uh, with a particular issue. Uh, and then the overhead of reduction allows you to do university work with it only being 10 percent. So the economics of this for a company is you have very low overhead rate, low cost engineering. That's obviously with the education part, grad students, etc. Uh, NSF does put money in to su money in to subsidize this. Uh, the faculty are subsidized by the state to a degree, so you're getting a lot of faculty time for the amount of money that you, uh, the companies put in. Uh, you have economy of scale, multiple partners on projects. You can really wrap up the size of the projects, uh, and then you get to share with the research of outside funding. So, for example, with the, the K program right now, we have a several million dollar um, prognostics program that uh, our com uh, companies inside CAVE are getting to share. Uh, we have millions of dollars coming in with left free solder outside the center, but the center is getting that knowledge and they're not having to pay extra for it. So the, those initiatives get to, uh, get to share in this. Uh, and then you get to link to other manufacturing centers. Uh, for example, we're having discussions about the new digital manufacturing initiative uh, and, and linking our center to that. And this will be a portal for that. Uh, last piece of information on the IUCRC piece, and that is that uh, we're, we have been granted the planning grant phase, and we expect that we'll be able to go to full uh, operation here in this next uh, nine months. Our target date for, some, for getting this uh, center kicked off is sometime in, in September. Uh, it's going to be in Huntsville, and uh, we're hoping to start running the operation uh, as soon as we kick this thing off in September. Um, just lastly, when we talk about vehicles, a lot of people assume we're talking about cars, and we certainly are talking about cars and including them, but they include uh, weapon systems, uh, NASA operation, industrial equipment, John Deere, others, uh, missiles, anything that's a complex uh, system that basically it moves, we are, we're including into this operation. So. We want to spend the, the last part of this uh, webinar uh, between uh, Tom Duvall and I actually talking about some specific kinds of projects so you can see the flavor. We can give you more depth about the center, but I think it's important to see the kinds of projects that we'll be doing uh, here at, uh, at Auburn and at the other universities. So I'll let Mr. Duvall go through this uh, first part of the presentation. Here. Good afternoon. All right. I, this particular project I want to talk about here was with uh, Continental Motors in Mobile, Alabama. We actually were still working with them, uh, providing some lean training uh, as well as this particular project. Um, we had a PhD student in this location, and a lot of the projects that I conduct are on site with masters, PhD students doing very specific work to solve problems in the facility. Uh, on this particular project, it was an implementation of a Kanban pole system in a traditional batch processing shop. Continental Motors, batches, all their material, they cut all their own steel, heat treat it all, and they move it in lot. And they have multiple products and, and very complex 
are too much inventory given the batch processing model. So their idea was, why don't we try to implement a pull system for a crankcase operation? It was the most logical place to go. Uh, so our PhD student worked with them under my advisement and uh, developed a, uh, a pull system for crankcase that is now functional up and running and they're pretty thrilled about that. They've got 10 other feeder departments uh, that can have the same methodology applied and actually has to have that happen to really get the full impact of this. Uh, they, also, um, they also implemented a continuous improvement system and, and I'll talk about this a little more in a couple of the other projects. Uh, because this continuous improvement system is really driving all the waste in their facility and tying to the process so that they have a methodology and rules around it to drive this improvement. This was implemented several years ago and if you look at the chart on the right you see this extremely significant improvement of equivalent heads to revenue over that period of time. I took another company down down to Continental they're interested in doing this and they asked the vice president that you saw on the first slide uh, how were you able to achieve this kind of significant improvement? And he essentially said, we don't know. And, and his point was, we've solved roughly 1,200, 1,500 significant issues in our manufacturing process that led to this kind of improvement. So essentially, throughout this entire batch processing uh, engine plant, continuously driving these things out with a very structured methodology has led to significant improvement in cost. So it's really defined by how you use people, the responsibility and authority so that everyone's well aware of it, what the operating guidelines are that, that can be obviously tailored to the organization we're working with and we've done this with several. Uh, the system elements are boards and databases to track the metrics and uh, the data is linked to policy deployment for the particular organization here very strongly at Continental, meaning here's our vision for the company and it comes right down to the floor level and they're all linked. Uh, we've had four successful implementations. This goes way back to my Daimler Chrysler days at Sterling Heights Assembly outside of Detroit and Continental Motors. They're about six years into the process. We've implemented it at Coachcom and at Pinson Valley Heat Treating as well. So on this particular slide, that's a 60% improvement in revenue per head and a 35% reduction in labor with no, nothing really to point at to explain it other than the fact that we're solving these problems that are obstacles to our business in a very structured way. So speaking of the continuous improvement system, Don Hendry is the president of Pinson Valley. He, I took him down to Continental to see this program, which he decided he wanted to implement in his particular location. So they, the specifics of this, they, this is just a quick snapshot of the rules around the system itself. Of course, that's a little more expansive, a couple pages. We've tailored it to their organization. They've input it, and they're operating well under this system now. I forgot to mention on the Continental slide, the uh, PhD student was hired by the company. So he's working down there for them now, and his job is to apply this methodology for pull throughout their facility. I'm going to quickly, now this isn't my expertise, we don't have uh, Sean Gallagher with us, but uh, what he's doing with uh, occupational safety and ergonomics, one thing that he's looking at in terms of research is how to predict musculoskeletal disorders in an operation. I was under the impression myself back in industry that uh, we had scientific basis for how we determined ergonomic risk to a job and found out that that's not actually the case. That's just exper experience based and what Dr. Gallagher has found in some of his early studies and, and it seems to be well supported. Uh, he's earned this, if you look at bullet two, the 2013 IAE Liberty Mutual Medal in Ergonomics Award for this research he is about to the point to determine that, that fatigue failure in humans behaves very similar to uh, materials that you use on products. And he's developing models so that you can predict this by job, so that you can look at posture, effort, repetition, 
various things like that, plug into the model and assess the risk relative to a person becoming injured on the job. And uh, therefore, theoretically, this can be used kind of like a PFEMA analysis when you're launching product. So this work appears to be very successful and has possibly very broad application in industry. So uh, benefits, obviously, is uh, assessing the true risk of loading you know, on a particular job. What are the job redesign strategies? So obviously, you don't want jobs that hurt people. So how can we fix them? It certainly will give you uh, information on how best to design the job when you have a model that does the calculation for you. Uh, it will also tie into age and gender. You know, how does that risk apply to age and gender? We've got quite an aging workforce in the U.S. And uh, job rotation, how do we place people, certain strategies for it. And the, the savings are huge for this particular area. Uh, the costs related to injuries on the job are so very significant to an operation. Now, in this is a particular project with a, a tier one auto supplier that we've implemented. It was essentially they had a highly automated process with uh, sensors throughout all of their manufacturing processes that were failing. So we mapped all the sensors. Uh, we evaluated the need for some of the sensors, the effectiveness of it, and recommended improvements to it. All, their entire chassis line was mapped. Uh, improvements were recommended. Uh, we, we used a detailed 8D format to do the problem solving on it and our student was hired by Borg Warner primarily based on the work that he had done at this particular location. They were very impressed with what he had done. He had also conducted a, a, a uh, developed a value stream map to show them their true lead time from customer order to delivery in the particular process so that they could target areas for improvement and typically that's relative to whip and change over time. Uh, I'll let uh, John speak to this uh, Chrysler Electronics project. Okay, so this was an area that we uh, were looking at in a, in a, a high, very high volume operation for, this was radios in particular, for tests. So this was uh, 16 different stations. And so what we're looking at is, are there methods to change the operation for test? Uh, what in, how could we change the operator um, uh, linking into the stations as far as the number of uh, stations an operator could, could work with and all? And uh, over the analysis that we'll show you in the next slide, basically we're able to take out four operators per shift uh, and at the same time increase the throughput by approximately 5%. Uh, we also were requested, this was a, a union shop here, uh, requested by the union to make sure that uh, the uh, uh, ergonomics uh, issues were not going to create a problem with the, the workers and we did, using the uh, Occupational Safety Ergonomics team, did assessment and, and, and proved to the union that this was an acceptable uh, solution is there was actually there's no problems created with this and the union actually accepted this and bought off uh, on the implementation. Uh, there's a couple of pieces that are a little bit unique. This is actually a understanding of the learning curve associated with uh, testers uh, in this particular case, although it actually goes with a lot of different types of things of learning and doing data analysis. This is where some of the data evaluation comes in. Uh, when you've got a, a, a large amount of data for performance and you can look at learning curves for how, it, how long it takes to do certain jobs and uh, what kind of expertise you would need with that. And then uh, back to the systems analysis part, this is just a piece of it, but uh, uh, doing a simulation model and, and being able to understand what's going on with the logic uh, flow, the timing issues, the operator uh, linking into the uh, machine, etc. on performance and then making recommendations and going back and re-simulating that. You'll see some other examples of this. Uh, we have one of the better simulation teams you'll find at the university here at Auburn and been very successful with a lot of different angles of simulation out in factories. Hey, Coach Tom, uh, the purpose here was to improve throughput and quality and improve the documentation and metrics. The metrics that they 
had were just about useless because they're extremely difficult to get and hidden. Uh, so the plan was to improve the changeover times for many different projects for this was to improve changeover time for electronic projects, manage implementation and develop lean cell. They, they really weren't measuring performance for labor metrics and we're still working on that. We've been working with them for at least uh, three years now. Uh, design of experiments for engineering and manufacturing, optimizing production schedules, machine setups. Uh, we had to define uh, solder oven profiles to improve their quality and develop standardized work instructions for the process. So we've implemented all that you see in the upper right with the exception, as I mentioned, of the labor metrics. We're now barcode scanning material as it moves from process to process and we're capturing all the data relative to that so that we can develop true labor standards that we can compare the actual paid against the standard. Uh, so that's something to come to where we can get a delivery measure and a performance measure on labor. So uh, the results, 2.3 days per month eliminated from setup, lean cell for assembly in place, and that was required because they had crazy seasonal demand problems, and because they had a fixed operation in the straight line, it created all kinds of havoc for them. Uh, we plan to implement that in other areas. We commissioned a new solder oven that we picked up from uh, Huntsville Electronics when they were shuttering their operation and put that in place. Uh, all the standardized work is in place. We renewed the project. We've been working with them, like I said, now for three years. They've offered two of our students, three of our students positions. Unfortunately, it's local here in Auburn, and I guess they wanted to go explore their world, and they went off to different locations. This just happens to be our first student is working for Intel in uh, Portland, but two others as well, they offered positions. And they're very happy with the work we're doing. So the, the slide that I'm showing you now, the reason I'm showing you this, this is a senior design undergraduate team. This is not the typical project that we're illustrating here, but because we work with them, uh, we, uh, do, we put a senior design team in place. They implemented the lean cell for them. And uh, if you see the bottom right note, uh, this is signed by the COO that they saved them 42000 annually from this work. So our undergraduate senior design work can do some good work as well in these organizations, but our primary focus is on graduate level PhD students. Uh, so data, I mentioned to you the data, they now have credos and trends on, on all of their quality uh, metrics for the organization. We're working on the performance, uh, as I mentioned. John can talk to Okay, media. so this is one of, the, one of the larger return projects in manufacturing that we've had uh, in, uh, in recent years. Uh, so we were contacted uh, to look at redesigning a uh, large storage system operation and trying to find a way to eliminate waste uh, with the operation. Uh, so over the course of, uh, of about three years of work uh, that would fall similar to the types of projects we're talking about here with our, our membership, uh, we were able to take out about 50,000 square feet, uh, eliminate 23 workers in the operation, uh, and then got over $2 million savings, the 3PL savings. Uh, and during that time, around the end of the third year, they hired uh, uh, was my PhD student to become the logistics specialist for their operation. Um, and so this kind of shows you a, a layout of what that, that looked like when we started uh, and photo of that. So you can see this is a very large operation. Uh, we did an assessment of what was in the storage. We did an evaluation for what the needs were. Uh, here this, this shows actually developed simulation models for all sorts of options for which, which way would work better feeding the operation. This is just illustration of the types of things we did uh, with the simulation modeling. <clears throat> uh, and uh, with that operation, <clears throat> the, the savings was significant. Uh, over the course of, uh, of that time. Um, we also started a different simulation project that was on a specific process line. Um, and in this particular case, uh, this operation, this 
work took about six months, I think, working with the company on this, on, on a new process line, new uh, $30 million investment. Uh, and the uh, improvements in process were about 12% on throughput while taking out about six operators per shift. Uh, and then we also were able to reduce the estimated whip by about 10% or so. So uh, this is just another illustration, and this is more focused on a process line where the first one was in materials handling set. Uh, so looking at the, the uh, process operation. So these are the types of things from a systems level you can do in a large scale running the whole factory or very uh, 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 defined back into a focus of, of one particular type of operation uh, or an entire line here. Okay, uh, a steel case project that's up in Athens, Alabama. Uh, it was we had a problem with excess waste and fabric cutting. They do an XY axis on the fabric and it's just a ton of waste. Uh, we had a student, PhD student up there as well, and evaluated a proposal for laser cutting technology to implement the process so that we could optimize the material off a sheet of fabric. And that's probably one of their primary material costs in this particular operation. The, the student integrated this into the current flow, which we had to change some ways in which uh, product flowed through the facility based on this new process, and set the new equipment up that was purchased from Germany, made sure it was running, implemented it. We thought we had about a 590000 a year annual savings, and we found later after it's fully implemented that it's a $1.5 million in annual savings. This particular PhD student was offered a position with steel case, didn't take the position. We got two master students up there now continuing work with them on new projects that they have. And then Viscofan is another example, and, and I'll go through this quickly. I know we're getting short of time. It's another example of looking at how material flows through a process in batch. We created the value stream maps for it, identified a future state for improvement, implemented a Kanban using the carts that they move as a visual, and played it, uh, painted floor locations adjacent to the proper machine that disciplined the flow of material to the defined location for whip to flow, which made a huge improvement. We had to make adjustments to the floor plan. Is a current state of the floor plan, and this was the future state. Uh, this particular project, we had a lead time to order to delivery in one area, went from 6.9 days to 4.4 days, and a lead time in, in the second area that fed the main line went from 3.6 days to 1.8 days. They also implemented a continuous improvement system for their particular facility. Okay, so this is basically the last slide that we, we have, and that is that our next steps will be to kick the center off uh, in, in uh, September of this year, and we're going to do it in Huntsville, so it's kind of centrally located with the current universities we have uh, on board. Uh, so if you're interested in this, uh, contact the, uh, uh, the faculty. Uh, you saw the chart there. We'd be glad to give you the contacts at uh, UAH or uh, Tennessee Tech or the others if you have interest in, in their research there. Uh, it's fine, too. Uh, and then we're going to have a, a follow-up meeting opportunity with the companies that are interested. So we're glad to come to your operation and talk to a larger group of, uh, of uh, people about what we can do and the types of things we're doing and, and what your interests are and to see if there's a good fit. Uh, and we would like to have uh, the companies that are interested help to define the specific project interest. We have already had uh, three meetings kind of preliminary meetings. We had one at Tennessee Tech, one at UAH uh, there in Huntsville, and one here at Auburn. Uh, and we've had very large support uh, from these various um, uh, meetings from the companies. And there seems to be a lot of interest and excitement in us doing this. And so our next uh, phase is to get this going, get the companies on board. But if you haven't uh, met with us already and you're interested, please uh, contact us and we'll go through uh, operation and try to find out if uh, we can meet your needs into the uh, into the uh, our center uh, uh, capability. So with that, uh, thank you for taking the time, and I guess we'll turn it over to questions uh, that might be there that we can try to answer. Any questions for John or Tom?
John, the membership fee is in the form of a research contract. It's not a gift. Is that correct? No, correct. This is a research uh, partnership. Uh, so you would uh, you would sign. Uh, we have a legal document that addresses all the intellectual property and other things, and it's very favorable to industry, uh, which is why all these industries uh, uh, members have actually been able to sign throughout the country. And um, and then the money would come in, and you can it's quarterly or some annually or annually, uh, and it, it comes in as research funding. And it's and it's expenditures or research expenditures. John, there's a question. Do you have any aerospace-related projects ongoing with students? Do we have, we have any aerospace projects with with students that are ongoing? Um, yes. yes. Uh, Continental, if you, if, you, if you notice the, uh, the project with the Kanban for the material pull for crankcase, they build aircraft engines, light aircraft engines, uh, four and six cylinder piston engines. All right. Another question, is the ISE department involved in additive manufacturing? Uh, yes, we are actually... Um, Expanding our capabilities, you saw the um, uh, slide with our faculty. Dr. Carano was hired, and that is, is his expertise area for our faculty. So he is working with some mechanical and um, uh, materials engineering uh, faculty here, uh, and he's having a lot of dialogues with a couple of large companies on additive manufacturing of adding the research capability in with Auburn right now. Uh, probably somehow linking, as we said, these other outside efforts to the, the center. Probably that would not be directly under the center, but would be linked under that. And I can't, I'm not privy to give you the, the details of that right now. Uh, but, uh, but we are pushing to add additive manufacturing as part of our capabilities here at Auburn. Other questions for John or Tom? Let me, let me add one more thing to that, and that is that uh, I know that UAH, Tennessee Tech, and Clemson uh, and LSU are all doing additive manufacturing work as well. And so partnership with the center gets access to the entire operation with those universities. All right. I'd like to ask Stan Graves, who chairs our Industry and Research Committee from the Research Advisory Board, uh, Make a few comments this time. Thank you. Thank you, Rodney, and and uh, the presenters as usual. I, I learned a great deal more about what goes in Auburn than I ever uh, imagined. Uh, this is fascinating. I, I, I like applied research. I had a question. I'm involved with a little small uh, technology company where we use high frequency ultrasound energy to uh, to for for T excuse me, get my tongue untied for fatigue enhancement. And it, it seems it would be great for automobile manufacturing, for aerospace, where, where you can go to higher strength metals uh, and, and be able to weld those or shape those without the fatigue problems you usually have. Who, who should I contact uh, in your group to, to explain in more detail what we do and how we might get involved? Um, well, I would say for starters, Dr. Carano is probably the lead on the center that we have here that would be uh, working with that. And, and again, he's working with, with some of the materials and, and mechanical engineering faculty uh, on those issues. And that's, you're exactly right. There's a lot of transition uh, as automotive goes to the need for lightweight materials, etc. The aerospace community is probably you know, five, ten years ahead on, on technology associated with that. The flip side of it is that the uh, automotive is probably five or ten years, maybe a little bit further ahead on efficiencies in manufacturing and the transition on that the other way we think will be valuable. But you're right, that, those are great uh, uh, opportunities and that was that the, the fatigue issue with inspection with these different materials uh, is certainly something that has come up in I think every meeting we've had of the three uh, meetings we've had previously as an interest area. Also, optical inspection for operations as well uh, was another big one. 
So I would add, I would say send it to Dr. Carano here at, at Auburn, and then we get it to the right uh, right people working on it. Super. We've treated about 20 ships for the Navy where they have fatigue-related problems, particularly with welds and aluminum, and, and just solve the problem that we we can't seem to break into automotive. So this could be a good opportunity, and there may be a chance to work. I would hope a chance to work together on this. Yeah, and you, you may also want to uh, contact uh, Dr. Payton. You saw his uh, machining lab. He has the, he does uh, stir welding in that particular operation as well, and he's got quite a background with metals and joining metals and cutting metals. So he, he may be somebody that would be interested and could add to that as well. I'd already made a note on that one, so thank you. And again, I'd like to thank all our participants, and uh, these are all, uh, it's all been very helpful. Uh, I think our participation continues to grow. I hope it's worthwhile for you gentlemen to tell us about the wonderful things you're doing at Auburn, and and uh, I think you'll get a list of these attendees, and, and please ask us to help you more if we can. And, and John, I actually have one more question. Uh, how much emphasis will be actually on developing manufacturing processes and materials? Uh, well, that's actually that's a big part of of the activity. I will say the Auburn team that started, okay, is more out of the industrial manufacturing area than the materials area. So we have added Virginia Davis over in chemical engineering, uh, and then. Um, uh, Daniel Kim in materials, Lewis Payton in mechanical, uh, and, and Rob Jackson and others to, to, to kind of fill out this, and we're continuing to add uh, some faculty in that area. The universities that we've added, Tennessee Tech in particular, uh, and LSU, are heavy, heavily focusing on the, the, uh, the process, materials process, more than a lot of the other topics that we've discussed here, like uh, safety ergonomics or or systems analysis or so. Uh, so there's a lot of that capability in the center, uh, even though what we, we showed more about what Auburn was doing here. We're, we don't have as much of that in the current activities as some of the other universities uh, would have, but uh, that's a growing area. Yeah, and one of the, one of the whole ideas of the uh, multi-university IUCRC is to provide industry quite a menu of capability. So between the three universities, depending on your problem, we'd hope that we would have the expertise and research to be able to apply to whatever the problem is you may have. Our job would be to find the right researcher that fits the problem. And we did this presentation more for the Auburn interest because that's what uh, you know we were trying to feed out there. But we really uh, have got a model of this being a very collaborative activity. So we're wanting to have uh, multi-universities on a large number of these projects working, trying to find the right faculty at the universities to work collaboratively on the, on the topics and not not just be funding Auburn for Auburn work versus funding UAH for UAH work. So uh, our goal will be to find the right team of people on the needs that the industry have uh, has there as opposed to putting a wall up between the universities. Any final questions? I'd like to thank John and Tom for presenting the webinar. I'd like to thank all the participants for your time. I would like to remind you the webinar has been recorded, and you're encouraged to pass this information on to anyone you know who could have interest in this topic. And Vicki will email out a link to the recorded webinar so you can pass the, the link to them or if you find people in the future who may have interest in it. Reminder again, you will get a short survey, and please take a couple of minutes and complete the survey. The next webinar is scheduled for July 16, and I think you'll find it very interesting to hear Tom Duvall talk about the AU Lego Manufacturing Lab. Thank you, and goodbye.